isn't, when people are th you know, it's going to be an emotional decision for people. It'll be a visceral yes. decision. And they'll be standing in the voting booth and they'll be thinking, leave the EU, get rid of the EU, and have Scotland going too. It's just too much. Yes, well, what about the other way around? What if Scotland votes to remain and we remain and England votes to come out? Does that mean England has to have a referendum to leave the Union? It's an absurd concept, come on. And you know as well as I do... I think, this I think, is, I, it may be absurd, no, no, but, but I think... But like Andrew, it. you know this as well as I do. These are politicians trying to use this for their own purposes, for their own short-term right. and narrow political purposes. And I simply say, look, that is what the nationalists want. They're going to go on and on about a referendum for years to come because they never accepted what Alex Salmond said was a decision of a lifetime okay. of a generation. Speaking of people going on and on and so forth and, and doing things for their own ends, um, you face a situation as a Brexit campaigner where you don't have access to all the government papers that you would normally have and the things that you'd like to see. Do you think you are fighting on a fair field? Well, my view about this is, is reasonably simple. I'm, I think that this can't possibly apply in the sense of us not knowing what is going on in the department because we are responsible for the departments. And, for example, I, I will have to work on... Uh, mm. these proposals that came back from the recent negotiations, if we vote to remain in, uh, we will have to deliver that. So and, we have and to do ca some work. And can that be delivered, by the way, th this quite complicated system of benefits uh, through across the 26 countries and the tapers and so forth? Is that deliverable by your department? Uh, it, it, look, if we're asked to deliver it, the department I have been running for five years, I know has the skill and the capability to find a way to deliver it. It's not easy, it's not simple, it is complicated, uh, and it was not our proposal, it was the European mm. Union's complex proposal, but they could deliver it. My sense about this all in all, though it isn't the same as saying does it limit uh, overall migration to the, to the UK, it doesn't. And I just want to remain on this one point, which is I simply say that with all of this stuff and all the complexity and all the threats, you know, I am positive about leaving the European Union because instead of those who say it's a leap in the dark, I think it's a stride into the light. I think it's about hope versus pessimism, and I think people will vote for that. Ian Duncan Smith, we're going to talk more in a moment about the future, but for now, thank you very much indeed. And as advertised and promised, Angela Eagle and Ian Duncan Smith are both here again. I didn't talk about your own future, I didn't talk about <laughs> Cabinet Minister's future, but let me put it to you. I mean, you've said today that... Um, uh, if we stay inside the European Union, we are like a ship heading towards the rocks of disaster. How could you possibly clam clamber aboard that ship and carry on sailing in, the, in that direction if the thing goes against you? You can't really stay in a David Cameron cabinet after this, could you? Well, that's not up to me. That's obviously up to ultimately well, to the Prime Minister. You. Well, it's, you it's up say, to the you Prime Minister. You could say no, mate. But, but uh, well, my Head view is... Your rocks. Yes, but my view is... Uh, but would actually, you want to? Yeah. I would want to make sure that Britain does everything it can to avoid it. <laughs> and that's the job of all politicians in. They do the best with what you've got. I'm for out, sure. but if they voted in, uh, people like me would have a responsibility, as would the Prime Minister, to make sure that we continue to try and make some further changes. And Ian, can, can, I, can I just take you up on this idea that those that want to uh, stay in Europe are somehow pessimists? Well, that's what I'm I, I actually think that we, it, this whole issue is a proxy for a debate about our future and we should be confident yeah, about our ability to make, to amplify our own influence within yes. the European Union rather than outside of it. And I'm actually very confident that we have a better presence on the world stage, that we are more prosperous, we have better job prospects and better economic prospects, better workers' rights, yeah, if we, we stay in that. the European Union. Well, I so I certainly <coughs> am not pessimistic yeah. about the future of our country. No, you're not. And that's actually a more positive uh, view than your leader managed to give in the course <laughs> of the last few days. But I well, say nothing more than that. Uh, I simply say that, you know, I've sat through all of this. I think, he, I think, I, I think, I think uh, my leader's probably far more uh, uh, positive uh, about, about Europe than you are. Is he? Uh, I've and actually I, and sat... I, and I actually think that he's, uh, he's campaigning uh, to stay in Europe uh, with more positivity than perhaps the, <laughs> the, the Prime Minister. Well, I know that Jeremy, I sat with Jeremy Corbyn during the Maastricht debates and I've watched him in debate after debate. And all I would say is, um, up until the final moment when he sat down with all of you, he was utterly opposed to us staying in. All of a sudden, he's changed. That's fine. I, I, you know, D Damascus has many, the many... He's oh, accepted oh, yeah. the From you, Angela, I know it's very persuasive. That Since one. we're talking about leaders, um, we are already seeing, as we were describing in the paper review, a bit of blue on blue. There's quite a lot of mm. a bad feeling already winging around the media sphere and, uh, and briefings and so forth. What's your feeling? What's your advice to your opponents in this campaign about conducting it? Uh, it's very simple. We agreed at the time. I mean, I th as I said earlier on, the Prime Minister deserves some credit. This is a generous offer to let Cabinet Ministers uh, to break ranks and to debate this because it's the biggest issue. Uh, but the general view at the time, and I think should remain now, is that 
don't play the person, play the ball. This is and do you think the other side have made a few mistakes in playing well, the I, person? I'm not going to start pointing the finger. What I will say is we should take a deep breath and ask ourselves a simple question. This is about Britain, it's not about us. It's about whether uh, uh, somebody, does as Boris, I saw... Does Boris Johnson believe that? Well, I think he does. You know, what really gets me excited was, you know, during the Olympics, for example, I, you know, was in the job centres and I would talk to lots of people who had skills, you know, uh, plumbers and, uh, and electricians. This is about them because they couldn't get jobs on the Olympic Park because people were coming in uh, Euro from the European Union, setting themselves, mm -hmm. hotbedding in my constituents, you know, and then getting jobs as though they so were... And they, they, look, they, undercut, you, you they undercut those who were generally British, qualified people. And I was worried about that, and I'm still worried, okay. and it's for them this debate's not about me, but, but, it's not about the Prime but Minister, actually, it's about those. Actually, we've seen the Conservative Party fall apart in mass recriminations within about four days. There's four more months of this, and you're meant to be running the country while all of this is going on. I mean, look at the we newspapers are, today. It's a farrago of blue on blue attacks and total incoherence, all sorts of briefings. Yeah. I've never seen anything you, like it. Well, well I must say, you guys involved. are experts on that. So well, I mean, you, you, all I'm I, saying. I think, do you think, do you think I it think was a mistake for the Prime Minister to go for Boris Johnson, quite so obviously in Prime Minister's question? Look, I said, I'm not going to get into personalities. My only advice to the party, and I've, you know, been this issue, this is like deja vu for me 24 years ago on Maastricht, all the same kind of stuff. My simple point is, Look, this is about Britain, and the British people want us to conduct this on the basis that it's about them. It's not about Westminster, You've got the it's not about us. The Exchequer issuing dire warnings from Singapore that he didn't tell us he was going to issue when he was actually doing the. I'd love to do an entire review. new program about George Osborne, dire warnings and our economic <laughs> future. I suspect I would be sacked if we tried. Government's a mess. Final, final call. The government's not a mess. The government is not a mess. Thank That's you. The final Thank call. you both very much indeed. That's all for this week.